approaching the final part of Cyclone Education Week Part 6. The Philippines is probably the world's real hotspot when it comes to tropical cyclone activity. Whilst the amount of islands comprising the country may skew the landfall figures, a total of 529 landfalls from 1950 to 2013 is still amazingly impressive. 16 of these were Category 5 landfalls, and two Category 5 storms have struck the Philippines in the last two years. Whilst in the Atlantic, the 2009 season was very quiet in storm numbers, the second lowest amount since the active period began in 1995, but the Pacific as a whole was slightly above average. The Western Pacific featured 22 storms this year, of which there were 13 typhoons. From the very start of the year, the Philippines was struck by inclement conditions and on January the 3rd, the Philippine Atmospheric Geophysical and Astronomical Services Administration, which will be known as Pegasa from here on in, declared that Tropical Depression O-Ring had formed over the eastern Visayas region. The storm dissipated quickly in just a couple of days east of Mindanao, but had caused severe flooding in the east, amounting to 23 million Philippine pesos, or half a million dollars in damages. 900 homes were damaged or destroyed, and 10 are believed to have lost their lives. The next month, another short-lived depression formed, and Pegasa named it Bicink. This storm lingered around northern Mindanao, but affected a wider area with mudslides on Cebu, and stranded 1,600. Then, at the end of April, Tropical Depression Crising formed on the western side of the Philippines and caused disruption there this time. Meanwhile, as this depression was dissipating, another was forming on the eastern tip of Luzon and soon became a tropical storm Kajira before pulling away from the Philippines. This storm caused the deaths of at least 28 and damaged nearly 4,000 homes, resulting in $27 million in damages. Tropical storm Chan Hom formed shortly after Kajira in the South China Sea, not far from Vietnam, and after drifting towards the north for three days, the storm moved towards the east-northeast and developed into a typhoon, striking the coast of Luzon as a Category 2 storm with winds of 105 miles per hour, one minute sustained. The storm left 65,000 homeless, and some areas reported two or three feet of flooding. The storm caused $26 million in damages and left around 73 dead. In June, the precursor to Tropical Storm Lindfa crossed Luzon, though it didn't cause any significant damage. This storm went on to cause major flooding in China. Days later, Tropical Storm Nanka formed and struck eastern Samar in the Visayas region as a tropical storm. This storm killed up to 17 people and caused $54,000 in damages. Then, in July, the next storm formed, Sudalor. This system grazed the northern coast of Luzon as a tropical depression, flooding over 10 villages and causing $4.4 million in damages, though the storm caused more damage in China. At the end of the month, the precursor to tropical storm Goni then tracked over Luzon, causing up to 13 fatalities, though damage totals are not known. Are we keeping track so far? Well, after this, the Philippines got a break from storms for a while, until September, when what would become Typhoon Kopu passed to the north of Luzon, causing some landslides, but minimal damage. On September 23rd, a tropical disturbance formed in the Philippine Sea and eventually developed into tropical storm Ketsana, named Ondoy by Pegasa. The storm didn't intensify much as it bore down on the coast of Oroa and Quezon provinces. Almost immediately, widespread flooding occurred across Luzon due to historic amounts of rainfall, including in Metro Manila. In one location, 18 inches of rain fell in 24 hours, 13 inches of which falling in only 6 hours. In some places, flood levels reached 10 feet or more, and a state of calamity was declared. In the Philippines, the storm killed 464 and caused $237 million in damages. However, more damage occurred in Vietnam, which Ketsana struck as a stronger Category 2 typhoon. As Ketsana was making landfall, a new storm was forming over Micronesia. The next day it developed into Tropical Storm Palma, and the next day another storm formed behind this one, Melor. 
Palma developed into a typhoon and peaked at Category 4 intensity whilst it approached the Philippines. Mercifully, the storm weakened a little but still made landfall on Luzon as a Category 2 typhoon and emerged out of the northwest side still at typhoon intensity. Melor, meanwhile, had also developed and was kept at bay to the northeast due to Palma, but it did reach Category 5 intensity and also influenced Palma's slowdown in motion. Weakening to a tropical storm now, Palmer reversed course and made another landfall on Luzon, stalling over the area and emerging off the eastern coast near its first landfall. The storm weakened to a depression before making a third and final landfall on the island, crossing it as a tropical depression and nearly stalling once more off its western coast before finally moving off towards China, where again it moved slowly as a tropical storm. This storm caused major flooding and agricultural damage with 465 fatalities and $417 million in damages as a result. In October, another Category 5 storm, Lupit, initially threatened to strike Luzon but stalled offshore, weakened and turned to the north. However, this small amount of good fortune was not to last. At the end of October, another typhoon took aim for the Philippines, Typhoon Mirene, which made landfall in southern Luzon as a Category 2 storm with winds of 105 miles per hour sustained. Strong winds were the main problem with this storm as it moved at a brisk pace but still caused $15 million in damages and 39 fatalities here. The storm went on to cause more problems in Vietnam too. In late November, a tropical depression formed east of Mindanao and was named Erdoja by Pegasa. The system caused travel disruption and four people lost their lives as a result. Since 2009, the Philippines hasn't fared much better. In October 2010, Typhoon Megi made landfall in Luzon as a powerful Category 5 storm with winds of 185 miles per hour and a very low pressure of 885 millibars, almost as low as Hurricane Wilma. Megi struck at a predominantly agricultural region, so human losses were limited, though substantial damage to crops and communications were sustained. In the Philippines, there were more than $250 million in damages, though China fared worse in this regard. 31 were killed in the Philippines, with 38 more dead in Taiwan. Even weaker storms have caused problems. In December 2011, Tropical Storm Washi formed out at sea and struck the southern island of Mindanao as a moderate tropical storm. This storm caused severe flooding, with waters rising several feet in an hour in some areas, causing $50 million in damages and over 1,200 fatalities in all. But this appeared to be merely a rehearsal for what was to come. Typhoon Bopa. This storm struck almost a year later in early December 2012, and after initially being forecasted to strike the Visayas region further north, it instead took aim for Mindanao and made landfall as a Category 5 Super Typhoon. Flooding and mudslides again caused chaos, as did winds of 175 miles per hour or more near the landfall area. In the end, the storm caused over $1 billion in damages and killed up to 2,700. Another late season storm formed the next year, Typhoon Haiyan. This storm took a similar track to Bopa until it reached Palau, at which point the storm moved a little further to the north. The way this storm intensified was truly frightening, not only reaching Category 5 intensity but becoming one of the most powerful storms observed on satellite and the most powerful to ever make landfall at its peak intensity, with winds of 195 miles per hour gusting to 235. The eastern Visayas region was devastated with catastrophic damage in the area around Tacloban on the island of Leyte. Here, a storm surge of 17 feet was reported. This and its winds contributed to its almost $3 billion in damages and over 6,000 confirmed dead, though this number could be even higher. You've been watching Cyclone Education Week. See you next time.